Okay, are you excited? Because I'm excited. And today we're kicking off Amigurumi Mod Project. Now, if you are new, if this is the first time you're clicking on, you're going to see a lot of projects that have um, a crocheted Amigurumi that has been modified in some way by using some form of um, other type of medium such as knitting, crocheting, well of course we're crocheting our amigurumi, felting, wool, fabric, um, paint, you name it, um, DIYing. <laughs> so you're about to be blown away by some really cute projects. Let, welcome on in. My name is Caroline at For the Love of Crochet. This amigurumi mod project is something that craftably ever after and I cooked up <laughs> because we like to challenge one another and so this is a challenge that we thought oh, we could share with you so let's get started let me pull out my pattern real quick of what mine was supposed to be and then the big reveal okay so are you familiar with this book well this is lolly lala beetles bugs and butterflies lolly lala Okay, I had no idea that I had one of her books, <laughs> but I never made anything from here except once, and I gave that away a long time ago, and I have not peeked in this book since. It's very beautiful, but I had no idea that it was the same designer. So, Lolly Lala, this is the pattern that I was going to make, which is supposed to be some type of kangaroo and it has a little baby in there look at the ears and the all the stuff and then here's some more views of it so she sells on Ravelry I'm not sure sure if she sells on Etsy or any other but this is the pattern I was gonna do and in my intro video for the Amigurumi mod I said that I was gonna turn that thing into a girl first of all completely different character and so I turned it into a girl and I was going to incorporate fabric and possibly embroidery let's see how far I got <laughs> and I also shared in videos of <laughs> and I also shared in videos that I was struggling in a major way with this one I have no idea oh and the reason is because I chose a pattern that I had never done before and I chose a pattern designer that I really never worked with before. And so in retrospect, I think I will choose a pattern that I can, one that I've already done and I'm like, ooh, I know I can do this or I can do that. Whereas this one, I was starting from the ground up and having to make changes as I went. So here we go. <laughs> So here she is. The reason why this gave me such a hard time was because, first of all, I did not like how this was coming out. This is Retro Stripes um, Red Heart, and it just wasn't coming out the colors I wanted it to. I wanted them to be darker, brighter, like these colors. Anyway. So you can barely see her, her eyes because again, in retrospect, I didn't know where to put the eyes <laughs> before closing up the head because I'd never made this pattern before. So I guessed and I couldn't necessarily use it as it was in here because they're way low down, but now I know why. So, so that was one thing. Um, I sewed her little scarf here. So this was my fabric edition. I embroidered her pocket. Now this was my favorite part. I loved doing that. I used um, that retro stripe, but down here I used the... Um... Okay, I take that back. This is called Day Glow. And I thought it was a perfect match for Retro Stripe, but it turns out it wasn't. So what I did is I used Retro Stripe for the main portions 
and then um, the details. So I changed this. And then as I was doing it, I forgot I wanted to incorporate this color around her sleeve cuff, but I forgot and I wasn't going to make it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not completely happy with her colors, but I, I am very pleased with my project. Um, the other thing I wish I would have changed is here's little baby. And I, I put some embroidery on this little guy too, but I made him with peach glitter from I love this yarn. And you, I know you can't see it cause it's really bright, but I would have liked to use this skin tone for her skin tone. I felt like this one was very dull. And so I wanted it much more brighter. And I think that would have popped more as well. I'm, I'm talking about all the things that I wanted to change, but nonetheless, here we go. And I'm going to show you her hair because this was something I did as well. So in previous dolls I've made, we do the hair cap. Now the hair cap is a separate piece that you can stitch on. What I did is in previous dolls we make, or I made, it would have you do this, this back loop crochet in certain um, rows, but I decided to do a back loop crochet in every row. And that way I could attach her hair in any way that I wanted. Now, what took this, this took really long because this is Crafter's Secret, the big, the big roll that you get at I Love This um, at Hobby Lobby. This yarn did not like to curl. So I had curled hair before in previous videos and this one required some baking. So I had done all this work and I wrapped those rods and put them in and then I was like, well, it's not very curly and you can still see some of these strands and they went completely flat. So I actually had to wet the rod and then bake it at 250 or 200 degrees for like two hours or an hour. And that is how I got the hair. And you could make it as full or as light as you want because each row has a back stitch that I could attach more. I got tired of attaching hair. <laughs> so I'm like, this is good. It's covering. <laughs> it's pretty. It's long. And this required, I only had 14 rods. This is five baking sessions. <laughs> I had to bake a lot of hair. So here she is. And then her hat is just a square. And then I attach the pom-poms. Her head is really big with the hair, so I stretched it out. So here we go. I completely modified the pattern from its original purpose and I am incorporated some embroidery and some sewing and that's it. Oh, I gave my I don't know if you saw it already. I gave her a tattoo, if you didn't notice. <laughs> I gave my crochet mod project a tattoo. So here she is. She's got a butterfly. <laughs> now I used puffy paint and fabric for this because my original idea was that I was going to use this fabric patch as her pouch, but because I used that day glow yarn that really wasn't um, the colors I wanted, this didn't really go as well as I thought it was gonna go. So I did not use that. And then I thought, well, maybe if I chose butterflies, maybe I could incorporate that. And I didn't feel like this worked either with these colors, these day glow colors. So I really messed up by choosing the day glow. <laughs> that was where my, my first wrong. Um, but I had tried to incorporate puffy paint. So 
These I found at like Walgreens or something for a pack and it caught my eye. I was like, you know, I'm gonna give it a go. And then I found these at Hobby Lobby for like 67 cents, regularly $2.69, and they are still on clearance. They're 68 cents, and I feel like these work better. These are the Tulip Sparkles, but they don't sparkle. And so what I did is I took one of the butterflies, and I thought I was going to put butterflies on here instead of the embroidery, but I liked the embroidery idea better and I was still playing around with fabric paint or puffy paint. So I had put some of the puffy paint on this one, this one, and this one. And I didn't feel like it was puffy or raised. And so I just decided and opted not to put that on, but I cut one of them out and gave it a go as part of a tattoo. So <laughs> I did incorporate more puffy paint and fabric more. So there you go. That is my little one. And I have not named her, but she needs a bright and fun name. <laughs> All right. And just in case you're wondering, the embroidery yarn that I used. I was going to use embroidery floss, but I felt like it was really small. So I decided to go with this Kobu because it's so bright, but also thin. And so I went with these to do the embroidering. The Amigurumi Mod Project. I had 14 entries. So thank you so much for participating. This was a lot of fun to do with all of you and getting to see your projects. Um, I, I know Craftably Ever After, Cassandra and I will definitely be doing this again. We'll just have to set up a date. But um, even from now and and further on, I'm claiming that Amigurumi mod hashtag. And anytime that you modify a crochet project, definitely give it that hashtag so Cassandra and I can see it. And also, anyone else who wants to follow along, or maybe you have a crochet pattern and you see someone do something fantastic to it and you want to mimic it, follow the hashtag amigurumi mod and we will be sure to all see it okay so i had 14 entries and a handful of youtubers so what we were going to do is i got all your names in here and whew, so there's 14 of those and this is what we were going to win this is, um, I had two of these, so I'm putting this in the giveaway. This will be email, I mean, this will be sent out to you if you are chosen. And also a $25 Etsy gift card that you will get immediately as soon as we hook up. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I got 14 of these, but, and show you all the projects that everyone has made who's contributed. Okay, so first up is Diane, and she sent in all kinds of things that she said she bought to prepare for this project, and one was Finn the Fish, and she made two of these. One she incorporated, it looks like jewelry and fabric and top stitch sewing and even ribbon and even maybe a feather for a fin. It's so cute. She made two fish and she has two Amigurumi monsters that she made as well. One came from Amigurumi Monsters too. It looks like she incorporated fabric and um, felt and top stitching and just her own little design. So that is super cute. Next up we have a good friend of mine who modified this pattern from being a bag holder to a stuffed amigurumi. And it looks like she did a fantastic job. I think it's so cool that it can hang like that by its tail. And it looks like she put in some embroidery that I thought was just such a lovely detail. So thank you, Michelle, for contributing. And I love your opossum. <laughs> 
Okay, next up we have Nova from Nova Gnome Creations who who actually made a YouTube video for this and she turned this gnome into, well, she destructed a Dollar Tree gnome and turned it into a crocheted gnome. <laughs> I will link her video down below. Next up, we have another YouTuber by the name of Bonnie, and her YouTube name is Strawberry Bonnie Crochet, and she actually used the leaps -a lot pattern that I did by Chronically Crocheting, and you can buy that pattern off Etsy. It is such a fantastic pattern. It looks like she wanted to glitify this baby. It is so cute. She used some lots of sparkles and big eyes and big jewels and it just looks gorgeous and then another youtuber by the name of jasmine she i believe her youtube name is the proud protea now this is one of my favorite bunny patterns and it she used some cross stitching and it looks so cute and this was going to be a special gift for a new member in her family that they just love 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 and they made she made this special gift and she gave it her own blanket and she also uh, crocheted a baby size blanket that matches. And if you haven't met her, there she is. <laughs> um, okay, next up is no stranger if you are a crocheter. Her name is Chantel and she is an avid crocheter. She is a faithful viewer and she created this beautiful bunny Pokemon and I, my favorite part about this were the eyes. I just love those eyes. I mean, think about it. Using heirloom buttons for eyes I mean, or jewelry, that would be a fantastic way to memorize somebody having, um, using those buttons. I know I have an old can of buttons from my mom. So that was the first one. And her second one, is called the disco mosquito <laughs> and she wanted to glitify this one and i just love what she did with this one she did some embroidery and then she also tried to glitify those eyes she put a lot of rhinestones on there um and it's just so cool looking i know she contributed that to the pokemon crochet along as well Okay, next up we have a pattern by a new view, um, a viewer by the name Gail, and she used the Cute Crochet Critters book, Crochet Cute Critters, and she made the elephant and all of the details that are on the head and the ears and the feet or legs are all felted and wool embellished. So um, that is fantastic. I love how you can make, give it nails and, and foot pads. It's so cute. I also really like the flowers. So thank you, Gail. Okay, next up, another YouTuber by the name of Cheryl, and she's the Curly Moose Crochets. Uh, every YouTuber I will link down below. Now, she is the perfect example. She didn't exactly use an Amigurumi doll, but she used, she stepped out of her comfort zone. She picked a pattern from a felt doll book that she's had for a long time. And because of this Amigurumi mod challenge, she decided to challenge herself. And so because she thought it was two mediums, that she thought she could use the felt doll and then crochet some accessories. And it's just beautiful. I just love what you did, Cheryl. And you encourage all of us to sew a doll. I just think she's so cute. Now, she was being a little critical that she thought her eyes were a little off, but it doesn't even matter because it is so cute. And I love the hair. <laughs> and here we go. Another YouTuber. Thank you, YouTubers, for supporting us. Um, the next up is Shannon, and she's the Spoonie Stitcher, if you don't know her. And her pattern comes from inspiration from the Aristocats. And she used 
Chronically Crocheting's pattern. You can find that on Etsy and I believe on her YouTube channel. And it looks like she used puffy paint. She didn't give me very many details because she thought she was going to make a video about it. But she did use some washers and some puffy paint. And then of course she set the stage. She, she set a scene and it's so cute. Okay. And here is Gail, another YouTuber from Stitchity Doo Doll. And, and Stitchity Doo Doll, who is such a fantastic crocheter and podcaster because she gives you every detail about everything she makes. And so if there's any question, she's got you. And she always has such good descriptions. Um, so if you don't know Gail, go check her out. Um, this is a free pattern called Pitsy Bunny that she got from La Crocheteria or La Crochere. I don't know how you say it in English. Crocheteria. Crocheteria. <laughs> I don't know how you say it in English. Crocheteria. Crocheteria. Uh, and she used fabric and look at that cute face. So I just love this bunny. So this is a free pattern off that blog. And then next up we have Enid. <clears throat> so Enid may made Cassandra's buddy bear pattern who I'm doing this Amigurumi mod crochet along with. And she made her pattern and it looks like she used cross stitch. And that is such a neat way to embellish. And then she also made this lovely, beautiful, bright outfit for this joy doll. And oh my goodness, look at all those buttons and colors. And she said this is by a designer named Aniqua Wilkerson. So I just think she did such a wonderful job. Thank you, Enid. Okay, and the next entry is from a viewer named Karen who said this is Mr. and Mrs. Taddeus Pole and oh my goodness look at the scene on this little thing oh my goodness that is so cute I mean she made a whole scene we got a crochet lots of crochet some pillows a rug and a, a couch <laughs> And a sign. I mean, she, and this is just awesome. You need to set up my pictures like this. Awesome job from Karen. Okay, uh, and next up we have Chronically Crocheting, who is Crystal, and she sent in her Leaps A Lot pattern, but she turned it into a girl version, and she wanted to glitify it with some beautiful buttons. And I must say that the buttons she chose just hit perfectly. And that is something that this Amigurumi Mod Project has encouraged her to do more, is to think outside the box with buttons. She now has a newfound love for buttons and now she's going button crazy. <laughs> so you just might see a lot of buttons in her Amigurumi <laughs> in her next videos. So that is great. And she incorporated some cute ones. I just love the hearts for the smile and the eyes are all glitified. And then she used fabric for his little belly patch. Okay, and then last up, we have this sweet doll that was made by Denise and she sent in two patterns. One is this doll from Mary Lee Lease. I always have a hard time, but she is one of my favorite designers and I have all three of her books. So this is from one of those books and she used a lace trim for the doll. And then for the eggs, she used a YouTube tutorial. Those embroidered eggs are perfect. Little something that you can make to practice your embroidery skills and make flowers. So if you know, and if you mess up, it's an egg. It's it's all right. Use it for hide for hiding eggs next year. And so uh, I love that she did that. So thank you all for contributing. All of your projects are so cute. I so thoroughly enjoyed it. And yes, let's keep encouraging each other and let's continue amigurumi 
Um, let's keep the Amigurumi mod alive. So it's time for the winner. Okay, so I have all these names in here. Let me give it a give it a toss. All right, I think I found one. Gail. <laughs> That's Stitchity Doodal. She is a YouTuber. So congratulations, Gail. You have won this Amigurumi book and a $25 Etsy card. So woohoo! Thank you. I'm so happy for you. And thank you again for contributing. I wish I could send y'all something. So I shall see you again soon. Thank you again for participating and uh, hugs to you. And I shall see you again very soon. Bye.